I have a thing about strays. Here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, The Batman's Catwoman. Selina Kyle is a mysterious figure who is quietly infiltrating Gotham's seedy underbelly to further her own agenda. Her fierce attitude and tenacious agility are the perfect tools to excel as a cat burglar, but hidden underneath the array of identities and the motorcycle leathers is a protective soul who is more at home with the city's strays than its citizens. Before we get down to looking at Catwoman, how about the first thing we do is figure out how tall the figure stands. In order to do that, I'm going to bring in my ruler like I do with all the other reviews. I'm going to put it right to the very top of Catwoman's head. She is going to be a little bit shorter than the previous Batman and Riddler that we've already had a look at. Catwoman stands six and three quarters of an inch tall or a little over 17 centimeters tall. And speaking of those other figures, let's bring in the previously looked at Batman and the just recently looked at Riddler. While Batman and Riddler are around the same height to one another, you can see that Catwoman of the three figures is the shortest one we've looked at so far. Based on what we've seen so far with the three figures we've had a look at is that they all come with three things. A trading card specific to the character, a generic stand that's across the board with all the McFarlane releases, and then one accessory that's going to fit into their hands. To be fair though, both Riddler and Catwoman only have one working hand anyways, as the other hand is molded shut. I really kind of wish they could get away from the idea of having fist hands on the one side. I'm all for gripping hands because if you decide later on that instead of putting the whip on this side, you can at least jump ship and put it on the other side instead. Now, of the things that she comes included with, let's start things off first with looking at her trading card. The trading card, I was trying to think of whether that's actually from the movie or the figure. And the more I look at it, the more I think it's the figure. You can kind of see right there, there's a cut line that goes through her abdomen area. This is where the top of the torso would be articulated via ball joint. And right here as well, you can also see there's a hinge joint in the knee. So it is actually figure photography not taken from the movie, which is also something also I want to talk about. And it has more to do with the head sculpt. I guess we'll kind of wait to talk about that in a second. On the back of the card, though, it does say her real name is Selena Kyle. So at least they're staying consistent there. And there is also a paragraph read up that you can either freeze and read for yourself or you can, again, jump to the beginning of this review, where it happened to be the same thing I read at the opener. So we're going to put that trading card to the side. So far, it seems, Batman was the only one that actually got an actual still from the, from the movie. All the other ones have used figure photography. Anyways, putting that to the side, the figure also comes included with the display stand. Yes, it's the same stand as what we've got with both Riddler and Batman. It's also the same stand that we get with many of the McFarlane releases. As the DC logo sizzled on there, but still I would have loved to see them actually use the bright red Batman logo on there as well. I think it would have really popped nicely against the backdrop of the black plastic stand. One single peg that's going to attach to the underside of her, of her feet. We're going to put that to the side and come back to that later on. The figure also comes included with a whip. The whip not only is a, is a harder plastic, it's got a little bit of give, but it's more of a rigid plastic. But they have also permanently sculpted it with a little bit of form. So it actually looks like instead of actually just a draping whip that has no life behind it, they actually have sculpted a little bit of personality to the whip. So it actually looks like she's whipping somebody with it. Because, of course, only one of the hands is serviceable. We're going to have to choose this hand. That's a good choice. Take the hand, take the handle of the whip and fit it into her hand. And yet, yeah, at least it looks like she's actually got... It's nothing really worse than... It's difficult with whips because on the one end, they could use just a simple rope. But the rope problem is it's always just going to drape down just below her. Or you can also permanently sculpt a whip like this, which works fine, certainly when it comes to displaying her. But as a, as a whip that you'd be able to, say, wrap around and fit under her waist, you really can't do that. There is also no peg hole anywhere seen on the, on the actual belt where you could clip the, the whip onto anyways. So that's the only option that you have for displaying with the figure. Let's go ahead and take the whip now out of a hand and put it to the side. Okay, so here's my real issue with this figure. While I think she comes together nicely based on what we have so far to see of Catwoman, my real glaring issue with the figure, and you probably already know where I'm going to be going with this, her mask that she wears, pinched in the corners are sort of serviceable ears, but it's basically just like a toque or a hat that she wears, like a burglar's hat, for example, a mask that she puts over top of her face. From this standpoint, it's not bad, but the big problem is the bottom half of her face is supposed to be open up as well. 
The only thing I can think of, two logics for reasoning why they would have done this. Either the original design of Catwoman would have had a full cover-over mask like this, so they would have based the design of the figure off the original concept art for Catwoman before the movie decided to change it. Or, in the beginning of the review, or the beginning of the movie, she may have actually had a full mask that covers over top of her face. And as you see in the movie, it looks almost like it gets ripped. Now, I don't know if it starts ripped like that, or at the beginning, somewhere along the lines, while she's maybe committing crimes, the mask maybe gets ripped, torn off. Either way, though, if it was the case, if it was torn off, I really wish that they could have sculpted the figure based on that look, as opposed to one that covers over her face completely. First of all, it's harder to really look at this and see the actress that's playing Catwoman. I mean, yeah, you only really have the eyes to work from, but I hope that at some point they're going to release a second version of it with the torn mask down below where you'd actually be able to see her mouth. What we really have very little to work with here. I guess it's not bad, but really it, the, the stumbling block here is the fact that she doesn't look like Catwoman from what we've seen so far, because again, like her mouth is, is covered. It's covered over by the mask. The paint for what we have to work with isn't isn't terrible. I mean, you can see as well, they've painted in the eyes decently. There's one eye that looks like it's kind of wandering off to the side, but at least it's not higher up like Shannon Doherty. I always keep going back to the Shannon Doherty joke. That's so mean of me. I mean, the, the hat is sculpted decently enough, but I just wish that more of her face was exposed. The rest of her outfit is more kind of classic looking Catwoman, kind of head to toe all black. There's colors that do break up a little bit of the darker black, for example, on the sleeves. The belt also helps just to add a little bit of extra black to an otherwise all matte black body. There's also a little bit of gray that also comes in down below here, just below her belt. So that does help to bring a little bit of something different to the table. As you can see, the gray also covers over the back of her behind as well. I mean, the sculpt for what it is, what little paint there is afforded, it's actually decently sculpted. But for me, like the thing that I hate to keep going back to the same problem I have again and again, but if not for the face, it's the face I feel that almost ruins the rest of the figure that I really instantly want to get a version two of this where it actually has her face visible. Anyways, though, looking a little bit further down, she does have, she does have heels or not quite heels in the sense that they're separate from the rest of the foot. They're actually more sculpted platform boots. It does cause a little bit of stability issues when it comes to the figure standing, but at least you can go back to the tried and true method of using a display stand. I'm putting my hand in there right now, but you can just attach the bottom of the figure's feet, so at least it gives her a little bit of stability there. Talking about the figure's articulation for Catwoman, we'll start first with her head sculpt. It does rotate all the way around. Again, you sort of get teased by the idea that there's her neck there that shows a little bit more skin. I'm sure at some point we are probably going to be getting a second version of this. There is also an unmasked version of Catwoman, but I kind of want something met in the middle there where we have a masked Catwoman, but at least we have more of her mouth. I know, I'm going to stop talking about it. Anyways, the head rotates all the way around. It also looks up and down and also back and forth this way. For Catwoman's arms, beyond the point of 90 degrees, she can actually almost looks like she's reaching for a light bulb, for example, or something high on the shelf. The arms go beyond the point of 90 degrees. And you can also take those arms and comfortably rotate them all the way around. Same on the other side as well. The figure does have bicep swivel, which for a second almost looks like it's not there. Until you look a little closer, there's the cutting line across the bicep. It does swivel all the way around. The figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. And Catwoman also does have an arm or hand swivel, but it's not in the same place where you would imagine it to be. It, she has a cuff right here. And really for me, if she already has it right here where you can rotate the wrist all the way around, why did they actually put an extra piece right here? It serves no purpose that I can think of. I mean, if it's just a continuation of her arm anyways, why wouldn't they have just sculpted this as, as, as part of the arm instead of having this as a separate piece? I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be, I guess, part of her glove, but if the hand is already rotating on its own freely, why would they have even wasted the mold of making this a separate piece when it could have easily been a continuation of her forearm? As for Catwoman's upper torso, it's on a ball joint. It can rotate all the way around. The figure seems to have a swivel cut here, also in her waist, but it's a little tighter on mine. The figure has leg splits, quite the leg splits on Catwoman. You can bring the legs forward, and you can also bring them back. There's a swivel where that attaches to the thigh. Double hinge on the knee for Catwoman. She has no articulation here for the top of the boot, because the boot is sculpted into the rest of her calf, but she does have articulation here in the feet, mentioned already. An ankle pivot, and the figure also has toe articulation as well. 
it, like for Catwoman here, based again from what little we have to work with, it's always the difficult time of reviewing these figures ahead of when the movies do first come out. Because like there's talking points that I may mention in these reviews that become completely irrelevant when the movie actually comes out. Maybe at some point, Catwoman starts with a full piece that covers over her face. Because it does make sense. If she's a burglar, after all, she would want to be concealing her identity. And the more she has covering over the face, the better the chances are, the better odds are of nobody recognizing who it is. Maybe somewhere during the movie, the bottom of her mask gets ripped off. But that's the Catwoman I would have wanted as the figure. One that you could actually see the lower half of Selina Kyle's face. Not one that's completely covered that we get with this release. There is one thing I've started noticing with a lot of McFarlane's figure releases. Not all of them, but some of them have started the trend of having closed sculpted fists. At least on one side. It really then dedicates only one hand as being the hand that holds any of the accessories that come included with the figure. I don't know why they're doing that. It's already happened here with Catwoman, and it happened certainly before when we looked at Riddler, and let's not even talk about Batman's hands. But why are they deciding to sculpt one hand closed shut? I mean, you would think, if anything, as an action figure, give the figure two gripping hands. If you wanted to decide, for example, I mean, like even Catwoman here, she has right now the whip around her shoulders. I kind of like the way that that looks, but I would have liked to have been able to have the other hand grabbing onto the other side of the whip, so it looks like she's kind of holding it like a skipping rope. I can't do that because the figure has a molded hand shut. Again, why would they have done that when it comes to an action figure? You really want to have versa you, you want to be able to be versatile when it comes to displaying the figure. If you're going to decide that one figure is going to have a closed hand, then include an extra hand, one that's gripping, one that if you decided you want to display Selena Kyle with the whip on the other side, you could do that. In this case, you can't, and it is only on the one side. It's not a deal breaker for me. If anything, the deal breaker is more the head sculpt that they decided to go with. Whatever the history is and whatever the reasonings they had for sculpting the head like this, it could have also just been the fact that the original concept design for Catwoman had the mask completely covering over the face, that that's what McFarlane's team sculpted with before realizing that they changed their ideas. That's happened before when it comes to an action figure. An action figure, they're basing it from the original co concept designs that they're given so that they can actually produce the figures and get them out at the time that the movies are coming out. And some sometimes along the lines, the concept, the concept art, the team that's behind the scenes designing these costumes, decide later on, you know what? Maybe we want to have Catwoman with a visible mouth because she's going to look a little prettier. And then McFarlane team is like, well, we just, we just finished sculpting her head sculpt like this. We're just going to have to release a second version of her down the road. And I'm sure that's probably going to happen. We already have now two Catwomans, one with the mask completely covering over her face. And then there's also an unmasked version of Catwoman. And I'm sure between that and the other one, somewhere in the middle, they're going to release another third Catwoman that's going to have the mouth visible. I'm sure that's going to happen. But what do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Disappointed by the fact that she doesn't have a mouth showing? I'm disappointed. I'm really hoping that's something that they're going to rectify with a future release. Are you excited for the Batman movie? Let me know down below in the comments section. And for your video question for today, what's your favorite Batman villain? I think for me, I would say it's Clayface, probably Scarecrow. I'm going to say maybe Two-Face. Uh, Joker's up there as well. I'd have to put Joker in there. I'm going to say Clayface, Joker, Scarecrow. Those are my top three. What are your favorite Batman villains? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying, I hope, the content that you guys have been seeing as of late. I love the fact that we've been doing the Batman reviews as of late. Just know there's more coming your way. But if you haven't yet done so, crucial on your part, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn as well the bell notification so that you're getting, you're getting those friendly reminders. You know then when the next Batman review is coming up onto this channel. And make sure as well you're keeping your peepers peeled. Periodically, good probably a good idea as well to check the homepage. See if there's anything on there that you may have missed along the ways. And yes, there is going to be a lot of Batman reviews coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.